Welcome everybody to the Chicago Bears franchise. Today we're going to be recapping this final season and this series and put a wrap here on Madden NFL 18. Obviously this series didn't go quite as planned and our final season did not have this storybook ending with us going to win a Super Bowl. Instead we lose the NFC Championship game and it wasn't exactly the most competitive game. And that is kind of where I want to lead off here with the video just talking about how you know, this season didn't go quite how I had planned, and while I think there were some fun moments, I don't think this series can at all compare to series I've done in the past. I agree with many of you saying that this is probably my weakest franchise for a year, as far as just like what game I did a franchise on, I think it's right up there with Madden 13 and the Raiders franchise, but I feel that, uh, yeah, this series, in a way, was disappointing. I still had fun during it, but not as much as I hoped to, and I'm hoping that in Madden 19 we have a much better series with my Miami Dolphins franchise. I'm still glad I picked the Bears. I like this team a lot for franchise, and they were fun to do the building that I did. We just didn't quite get the team to where they needed to be. I knew this team was kind of a year out from really being a Super Bowl contender, but I thought maybe we could still like exceed expectations and get on a roll if some players had some big years. And while we did have a pretty good season, a very fun one, we do not win the Super Bowl to close things out, and we win no Super Bowls in this franchise. Also, I'd like to see you use this comment section as just a platform for you to talk about how you think my franchises could improve going forward. What didn't you like about it? I know my formula hasn't changed a ton over the years, so if there's something you think that would freshen it up, or if you have any thoughts on what would make the franchise experience more engaging, more fun, beyond just posting more videos and getting more out, that's kind of a given, but I feel that um, if there's something else I can improve with the formula, that I'd definitely like to do so, so that Madden 19 gets off to a good start. Which, by the way, I'm sure many of you are wondering, when is the Dolphins franchise beginning? I am not sure right now. I'm not as worried this year about sliders as I have been in the past. I feel a lot of things closer to default this year are actually quite playable. So, I will be working on some slider testing this week, and I will be hopefully getting this franchise up and running here soon. I don't see any major issues in Madden 19 that'll cause me to delay it. The one issue is XP, or I guess skill points given out after the Super Bowl. I need to do some testing with that to see if I can control it. And as long as that's alright, I don't see any other roadblocks here to getting the franchise underway. But let's talk about the Bears franchise now. I just wanted to talk about this final season, recap everything, put a bow on it. Obviously, the series wasn't quite what we all had hoped. The team definitely took a long time to get to kind of just a winning way. Obviously, a lot of that began at the quarterback position as we had Mitchell Trubisky to start things out, and I never expected us to move on from him entirely, but it was kind of necessary after the first few years just didn't show any kind of improvement. So with Trubisky, the completion percentage never improved. We had all kinds of issues with pass protection and accuracy, and Trubisky also was injured quite a bit in his first couple years in the franchise. The thing I liked about the Bears franchise was that we had so much work to do as far as getting this team to have an exciting offense. Year one had the likes of Marcus Wheaton and Kendall Wright making all of our plays, and then we upgrades to having Cameron Meredith and Harlan Regis become a great one-two punch. I love the emergence of the tight ends in this series. Adam Shaheen's one player that I'll look back on very fondly from our time in this. This was a series where sometimes ratings didn't always like make sense. Like Trubisky's ratings got better and he didn't get better. I thought Clay Stites playing with him this year was way easier, more fun than playing with Mitchell Trubisky and Stites' ratings weren't this good to start out with, but I felt like he always had things a bit more under control for some reason. But Adam Shaheen, he was one player who was just able to catch everything in traffic, not everything, but there wasn't a ball that I threw that I didn't think he could find a way to come down with. So while he didn't have like the biggest numbers, only had two touchdowns in this series, I really enjoyed playing with Shaheen and Max Williams. They both did a great job. 
On the ground, obviously this year, one of the most exciting parts of the entire series was the out of nowhere emergence of Tariq Cohen. And he became the starting running back as a result. There was no way I could keep him on the bench. Were there signs of this coming? I didn't expect it. Did you think that Tariq Cohen was capable of this in this series? Well, he was always efficient with his touches. Everything here is from the franchise. Fumbles were an issue early in his career that probably kept him from getting a little more touches than I'd like to give him. And then receiving, not as much here as you might think, but uh, definitely this year, getting him the football. Defenses didn't know what to do when it came to stopping him. So we had him and Jordan Howard this season. And Howard had 855 yards. He spent a lot of this series banged up. There were a lot of injuries for him. And he was pretty consistent the entire way with the yards per carry almost identical every single year. Oh well, I got Jordan Howard 46 catches in one year too. That's interesting. I always look at my first draft classes in these series and try to find the star players to take us into the future. And Harlan Regis did a great job here in the two years that we were able to play with him. He wasn't from the first class, but he was from the second. And he had 2,000 yard campaign, 7 touchdowns, 61 catches. Not sure how I managed to keep this all consistent because I don't usually look at this stuff. So it's funny when it ends up like that. Kendall Demons, I really enjoyed having him as a speed threat on this team. Marquis e. Cole is one of those players where it's like, I really wish I could get a lot more years out of these franchises because a player like Marquis e. Cole needs more than just four or five years sometimes to see the full potential materialize. A big eye opener for me in just like the past year has been my Browns rebuild. And that's been a chance for me to see like, okay, here's what happens on Madden when I give myself basically as many years as I need to, to do something. And obviously that's a very different series, but if you are a fan at all of the Browns rebuild and you followed the journey, then you know that despite a very different type of series with a lot more simming and a lot less time spent in game, there was still an attachment grown to those players. And then we got to see, you know, in the case of Anton Greenberry, my quarterback who I took in the first draft, number one overall, he, uh, we saw an 18 year career arc. We got to see the highs as a rookie. We got to see the lows in like uh, years three and four where things were not going well. And then the emergence to being a Hall of Fame quarterback. So yeah, I love to get a much deeper franchise experience for you. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do something on a major scale like that. But as I've talked about in some recent streams, like I do think for the future on this channel that I'm likely to not do a dynasty after Kalispell. I'm likely to not do a franchise on MLB after the Twins, but I'm not near wrapping up either of those series and I'm really enjoying them. But it does mean that we're not really getting far in Madden. And I would like to eventually have it where Madden gets a really big focus and we can go further than we ever have before. But I don't think I have to rush into it right now with other good series on the channel. And quite frankly, Franchise is not in this place where it's like, yeah, this is the one mode I should be playing on this channel. With Franchise where it is, it's nice to be playing some other games, especially like MLB that has a more developed Franchise mode in my eyes. Franchise is getting better, but it's only getting like marginally better. We're not seeing it overhauled. I remember a little while ago reading some of the developer blog for like 2K's My League series, and I could not believe how much was in there. And it's like, I want a list that takes me a half hour to read when it comes to Madden, but it doesn't happen that way. So anyway, this year with the Bears, it really was just strange how we had so many blowout wins, but also we were capable of having these blowout losses. And there weren't a lot of losses this year, but throughout the series, there were big wins by a bunch of scores and big losses by a bunch of scores. I'm not sure why that was so much the case. I should have talked about how we uh, got blown out by the Falcons twice this year and at the beginning of the series. So the Falcons were my biggest problem here in the franchise. That first game, Devontae Freeman had what, five, six touchdowns and the sliders were all messed up? Wow, Clay Stites. Not much here in this game to be happy about. Oh my. Somehow the championship game was better, but still not much better. So... 
I'll look back at this franchise as one that did not realize its potential. I felt that sliders a lot of time held it back and you know there were some issues with Madden at the beginning of the game. For the first time ever I had to go and do like quarterback trait edits just so quarterbacks would like play normally and they wouldn't have all these bad habits. And then there was like the offensive line pancake glitch. And while I could have put up more episodes and maybe done a fifth season, I don't think that would change the way we look back at this series. Not in a major way. I think one more year would have been good, but I just don't think that it would fix everything that wasn't enjoyable in the first few years. So this season, I really wanted to see our offense take a step forward, and overall, I think it did. There were still a lot of sacks taken by the offense, and that knocks down our passing yards as a team down quite a ways. When you consider we were probably sacked more than anybody else by a wide margin. We also ran the ball better than anybody else, and that's made possible by Tariq Cohen and all those breakaway touchdowns. We had one of the highest scoring offenses. We had a ton of rushing touchdowns, and normally I'm a lot lower in this category. I liked our defense quite a bit as well. I wish we could have seen Bram Durth and what his career would turn into in this series. He definitely did not live up to the hype in the two years we did play with him. He was never much of a pass rusher, but his run defense in year two at least was really good until he got injured. We had a very good pass defense. I felt that our safety play was always top notch and Curry Peters. He uh, came into his zone as a cornerback and Prince of Mukamara was always a playmaker. Bears had most sacks this year, 65. A lot of that due to just like quarterback AI and stuff. I feel like my red zone offense numbers look the same every year. We usually score, but not enough touchdowns when we do get down there. And then turnover differential, probably not too great. Hey, it's positive. I'll take it. It felt like it should have been a lot worse given the 21 interceptions that we threw. Here are the awards to end out the series. Russell Wilson takes home the MVP. Coach of the year is Pete Carroll. And for the NFC awards, Russell Wilson, Offensive Player of the Year. Marquess Newton, Defensive Player of the Year. He forced two fumbles in the NFC Championship game. I'm assuming he was also the Rookie of the Year. Ben Talbot was Rookie of the Year for San Francisco. We obviously took Stites over Talbot. And Defensive Rookie is indeed Marquess Newton. Best quarterback, Russell Wilson. Running back, Todd Gurley. Where's Cohen? Number 10. Receiver, Michael Thomas. Russell Adibi's up there along with Julio Jones. Offensive line, Zach Martin. Then Randy Gregory. Marquess Newton again. Josh Norman. Will Lutz. Here are career numbers. And Jordan Howard had one year in the league before this series began. So most of these numbers are with us. All of Tariq Cohen's numbers are from this series. CJ Ross as well. He's another one that I would have loved to see what his career would turn into if he got more time with this team. And if I had to go through another offseason, I think it'd be really interesting to have that situation now with Cohen and Howard. And I'd likely look to trade Howard if the series had continued. Cam Meredith, a lot of these numbers came with us. He did have a little production before his uh, time in this series began, but... He obviously was a very good receiver this season for us. Harlan Regis in this series ends up with 14 touchdowns over 2,000 yards. Really enjoyed having him on the team and would have liked to kind of give him the Reggie Shepard treatment and get like a full rookie contract out of him. That would have been great. Let's go defense now. And I think one of the players who have one of the best lasting impressions with me is Marquis Starling. Let's highlight him here. Starling was only in this series for a couple of years, but we all remember after I drafted him, I kind of regretted it because he wasn't this coverage linebacker that I was looking for, and he had slow development. Well, Marquise turned that around by winning Rookie of the Year, and that brought his development up to quick. And we ended up with a linebacker who had incredible range, great block shedding, he could be a dominant force against the run, and with all the XP, he became a bit of a coverage linebacker at the same time. So, really enjoyed Marquis Starling. Very happy I made that selection. Pernell McPhee, a.k.a. the best pass rusher to come out of this series. It was him, not Leonard Floyd. McPhee, look at the numbers he put up. I'm not sure what exactly it was that made it so McPhee was better than everybody else. 
and especially late in the season that's when McPhee would turn it on and end up with these multi-sack games and these stretches of games where he'd have at least one sack so McPhee was an awesome player in this series one of the key players on our defense then you get Eddie Jackson who had a bunch of interceptions for us Adrian Amos really enjoyed this safety tandem Prince of Mukamara ups and downs throughout the series but I thought he was really good and especially with all the interceptions he was able to create for us in this series Curry Peters ends up with just four interceptions in the series Jonathan Bullard was always good in limited playing time Dante Rooks another player I will remember fondly from this series I think that if we had a little more time Rooks could have had a really fun career it certainly was great as a rookie with 13 sacks and I'm not sure why production fell off so significantly let me see downs played it did go down because we just added a lot more talent there and he was also hurt sometimes but uh the rookie season was amazing overall this was kind of the first franchise I've done where we did have to worry about injuries a lot more than in the past especially with the introduction to off-ball injuries this series had a lot more injuries than most sometimes it was Mitchell Trubisky and then Jordan Howard we had a lot of defensive injuries at times especially heading into the postseason here's what we had to deal with and I, I think that's an important dynamic for franchise especially when other teams are also dealing with a lot of injuries although Madden's very inconsistent and in players getting hurt and I think that there's a difference between injuries in game and injuries when simming so I might have to look at that when I am playing Madden 19. Overall, I really enjoyed this team that I constructed. I definitely think it was heading in the right direction. But unfortunately, this series is kind of cut short here. And I'm hoping that in the Miami series that we're able to have a much more complete experience. Also, Marcus Calhoun. It was the first time I took a player from a dynasty and just put him on our team. I never put Marcus in the position to just be a superstar because I didn't think that would be fair but uh it was nice to have Marcus on the team he did make some plays but never became a star player I wanted to basically have Marcus in this series and not have him start out as a superstar but at least get him playing time and have the chance for him to maybe turn into a superstar and that didn't quite happen but he was still uh, a pretty good player at times so what we're going to do now is just sim to the offseason. I want to know who wins the Super Bowl. We're not going to spectate the Falcon game, although I think it would have been fun. I think it's time to just put most of my efforts towards getting ready for Madden 19. So we're going to wrap up the Bears franchise here today. And your champions to end the series are the Chargers. All right, Melvin Gordon gets a couple touchdowns. I thought that the uh, Falcons were going to take it, but no. The Falcons beat us pretty much every meeting in this series, but it's the Chargers who take it at the end. So this series ends the same way my Chargers franchise ends. Same team wins the Super Bowl. LA had a big offensive day. They win 38-34, and they won with a young quarterback in Nathan Cannell. I'm not sure if he was a rookie because now that we're in the offseason, they might have tacked on the year of experience. We'll definitely check, though. Melvin Gordon does score twice. And again, the Falcons had to rely on Brian Hill, who had essentially the same stats as he had against us. Oh, my. Julio Jones, 2-16-2, and, and they still lose. How is that possible? And defensively, Joey Bosa. Could you imagine our offensive line trying to defend Joey Bosa and Melvin Ingram? Oh man, that last game had so much pressure. It was so tough to deal with. And I really hope that we can get some more balanced offensive line play moving forward. I changed sliders around a lot, but it never seemed like anything really fixed it. We'd have good stretches for a while where I thought it was playing to the ratings a lot more so than in the past. But then we'd have like a 10 sack game or something ridiculous so we could have had a rookie versus rookie super bowl if we had just beaten the atlanta falcons nathan cannell 31 touchdowns 15 interceptions where was he drafted he was pick 25 so i think that we also took stites over him stites was pick 14 and was also a pro bowler so keep that in mind i thought that if we had more time with stites 
he would have justified that first round selection. I knew what I was getting myself into taking a strong arm quarterback who didn't have the best accuracy. And yeah, the accuracy was an issue at times, but I felt like he was much better than Trubisky ever was in this series, and he was improving. And I felt like Clay Stites, had we spent more time in this series, would have been a very good franchise quarterback. Also, for most of this series, I really enjoyed having Frederick Ciccolo on the team. I just didn't enjoy that final game so much against the Falcons. I don't know what happened to where both he and Joe Thomas just could not block. Lester Stallings, I really like that draft pick. I had to get someone who was a good run blocker, and I think Stallings was excellent. He is a big reason why Tariq Cohen was able to shine so much this season. Cody Whitehair is another one of those reasons. One of our better pass rushers toward the end of the series was Carlos Romero, who was an undrafted free agent. I always love those stories of players who are lowly drafted or undrafted getting a major role. Overall, I guess you could say that I did have fun with this series. I always enjoy my franchises. There has not been one that I just did not enjoy whatsoever. But I didn't enjoy this as much as I would have liked to, and I think that's the same for a lot of you as well. I think that the games weren't as entertaining as they could have been. I felt like the game was never balanced enough for the series. But I want to just move on now to Madden 19. And I really want to give you guys an amazing franchise this year. And I want to get off to a fast start whenever that is. If it's this week, if it's next week, whenever it is. This Dolphins franchise, it's going to be different. It might not be super different in terms of formula, because I do like the formula that I have overall. Not that some things are unchangeable, but I just want to give you a series that, you know, you're a lot more excited to watch. You feel a lot more engaged with. I'm excited to get going with it. I think it's going to be a much better year for franchise, and I hope you are excited for it. So leave any of your final thoughts here on the Bears franchise down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think could be better so that my Dolphins franchise is a more enjoyable experience for you. And I'm telling you, I cannot wait to get this series underway. You know when there's a player who has a down year and they want to get back to their form the following? That's how I feel right now in regards to just giving you the best franchise experience here. So hope you're ready for it. I know I am. And I'm hoping we're talking about the Miami Dolphins franchise here very shortly. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Definitely check out my Kalispell Dynasty and the Twins franchise. Two series that I have really enjoyed putting together. And for more Madden content, check out my second channel, Mr. Hurricane LP. With the Browns rebuild, I learned of a brand new way to play franchise. And it became my favorite thing that I did hands down on Madden 18. So we're going to begin another franchise rebuild over on my second channel and another franchise here on the main channel. And I hope you're looking forward to it. Have a great day, everybody, and I'll see you again soon.